All right, thanks for joining us, guys. We're going to start on Zoom with Jeff Metcalf and then Alex Simon. This is for Diana. Can you just kind of go over the decision to play, how you felt, and then particularly what you were able to get done in, in uh, the latter stages of the game? Yeah, you know, um, obviously you want to be out there um, with your teammates. And, you know, we've had um, such a grind of a season. And, you know, against New York, it, I was just not ready to play. And, I, you know, the decision was, can I help? And if I can help in any capacity, I was going to try to play today. So um, we let it kind of just hang out for a couple days. And today I felt a little bit better. And uh, that was my mindset. If I could do anything to help, whatever it was, um, I was going to play today. So, you know, it worked out pretty well for us. We'll go to Alex Simon and then Mark Carlisle. Hello, everyone. This is for Skyler. The two players to your right have done this now four times with these winning a first round and a second round to get to the semifinals. It seemed like today you got that first taste and even have felt some exhaustion from it. Just how difficult has this been to do? And I guess, does that give any more appreciation to what the two to your right have been able to do now four times here? Um, yeah, well, I came to Phoenix for a reason, and that was to play with these two. Um, to This is my first series. I've been in the league for nine years. Um, obviously, it's, it's tough with this format. You know, if you don't really get a top four or a top two position, you got to play in one of these games. And um, for us last year in the bubble, I was, I was disappointed how it went down versus Minnesota. And I knew even coming in here last week when we lost, I was looking forward to the opportunity to come back. Um, and, and have opportunity at this game. But um, we made it to a series, we earned a series, and that's really all it is. It's not like we won a championship or anything. Um, that's, that's what we're after. But on to the next, we'll see who we play here really soon. Um, but yeah, obviously I, I, I came here to play with these two superstars and, um, and I'm looking forward to the next, to the next uh, time we can get on the floor together. We're gonna Mark Carlisle and then Danny Thompson. So you know, all season, but especially these first two playoff matchups, teams have been throwing whatever they can defensively to try to limit BG's touches in the paint. As we go into a series and teams are able to make those adjustments from game to game, how much is that going to affect the kind of chess game of trying to get BG involved and, and other teams trying to stop her? I mean, we obviously know um, that's everyone's game plan. Um, it would be my game plan too. <laughs> And we all know how, how um, just dominant BG's been not only this year, but, but throughout her career. So uh, that's when you really have to rely on, on everyone to make sure um, we're all focused on what we need to do. Um, and obviously her touches is, is our priority, but at the same time, we need to make sure everyone's involved, everyone's tuned in, um, focused on uh, being aggressive, being threats out there. And I think that makes BG's job a little bit easier, um, as you saw today, where you know there was moments where you know, she might have not got the touches, but I think that opened it up for, for later in the game. So, you know, it, it, it's all um, game planning. It's a chess game. And uh, I think we've been uh, kind of riding that wave all year. So we're starting to get the hang of um, when it's time, when it's not time. And, uh, you know, these two do a great job of doing that. We'll go to Danny Thompson and then Michelle Vopel. Please, Dave Thompson with a three-point conversion. Great win and great to see you as always. In overtime, uh, Katie Lou hits a three-pointer and then for Seattle, and then Breezy makes a block. And it seems like that block energized the entire team. And every, the three of you all especially made some key plays down the stretch. When you see a block like that, uh, like Breezy had, what does it do for you on both ends of the court? Because it seemed like it just jump-started everything. It definitely makes us want to, you know, play harder on defense again. And then when we go down on offense, you know, we're definitely energized. You know, big plays like that. It's just, it's enticing and the team feeds off of it. And then, you know, it makes us play even harder on defense the next time. So uh, when, when Breezy makes plays like that for us, it just, it just helps out everything. We'll go to Michelle Vopel and then Chantal Jennings. Yeah, um, Diana, Sue said uh, in her uh, post game that for the first time, she, she isn't sure about, about next year. She needs some time to think about it um, as one of her closest friends. Um, what do you think about that? And um, just how you've kind of approached um, the, the, uh, similar decisions, if you will, you know, in, in your career? You know, it's a, it's a, it's a very um, hard and, and, and tough decision. You know, when you've played basketball your whole life, uh, it's easy for, you know, the outside to, to think you're done or, 
oh, maybe she's had enough or she's played long enough. I mean, you saw what Sue did. I mean, Sue kept this, this team in it for, for the whole game. Um, Ability-wise, Sue's always ready to play. And we know that firsthand from the Olympics and playing against her. Yeah. Sue's the ultimate professional. And you know, um, yeah. that is the tricky part about being a WNBA player. You know, now she has eight months to think about, does she want to play again? And, you know, that's a long time to, to think about, um, do you want to do everything it takes to get back on the court? And uh, at our age, uh, whatever we used to do, it's times 10. So that's a decision she'll make, obviously. Um, you know, we've chatted about it, so we'll keep that in-house, Michelle. We'll go to Chantal Jennings and then M. Adler. I guess we're gonna stay on the topic of Sue. I'm just curious for all three of you, if this was in fact her last game and her last season, what do you see being her biggest impact or the biggest part of her legacy that she's gonna leave on this league? Uh, honestly, just how she conducts herself on the court, you know, night in, night out, her preparation, uh, you know, I've got to see that playing against her, playing with her at USA Basketball. Uh, I mean, she she's just a all around stud, honestly, you yeah. know, the way she competes, getting ready, night in, night out, coaching from the sideline, coaching on the court. Uh, you know, her legacy is definitely going to be great. And, um, you know, if she decides to walk away, you know, she's at the top. And if she decides to come back, then we're lucky to see it again. Absolutely. Um, just having spent the most time I probably spent with her uh, on the floor together this year. Um, I remember even we did a little mini camp, her, me, D, her, and uh, NECA. We did a little mini camp in January. And, you know, just seeing her in that environment, like, she works so hard. Um, she goes so hard. Um, she prepares. She don't let the little stuff go. Um, you know, she, she competes, she's competitive. And that, that's definitely, um, you know, her legacy speaks for itself, what she's done in this game. When you hear the name Sue Burr, everybody knows that name. And it's synonymous, it's been one of the faces of our game of basketball for, for a very long time. So whatever she has, whatever decision she made, you know, wish her the best. Um, do I think personally she could play? Absolutely. Um, but her legacy speaks for itself. We have time for three more on Zoom. We're going to go to M. Adler and then Paul Richardson. I uh, just wanted to ask BG, what, um, especially in the fourth quarter, what it opened up for you with the team taking um, Breezy and putting her in like the primary action as a screener, a shift into the weak side to alleviate those doubles? Yeah, uh, I mean, the fourth quarter just started working. You know, we were just moving and looking for the best shot possible. And, you know, my teammates, uh, they got me the ball in good positions. You know, I, I did my work, got down low, and uh, we were able to make it to make it work. Um, so, uh, honestly, it just opened up. You know, you just got to stay with the game. And um, that's literally what happened in the fourth quarter, honestly. You just didn't want to go home, not ready to go home. Thank you. Next will be Paul Richardson and then Kenneth Minoj. Congratulations, everyone. Um, BG, it, it looks like you're playing with a certain amount of ease right now. Like mentally, you know, you can do what you want offensively and defensively. What, what's gotten you to that point where it just seems like you're, you're, you're able to do what you want when you want? Uh, nine years in the league, learned a lot. And then learning from D, learning from Scott, learning from everybody, just soaking in everything. And them always being, you know, super encouraging to me, no matter what, um, what how Sometimes. The going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> but uh, just, you know, it's just, it just comes. And uh, it just makes me play at ease. And when I look to my left and I see them, I mean, of course, anybody would play with ease. We'll end on Zoom with Kenneth Minoj. Hi guys, I just wanted to ask. Obviously, team de te um, defense is a team is a team effort, a team's um, and top down the your team your team put together t the defensive effort. But what does it speak to Brianna Turner specifically? Twelve points, three uh, twelve rebounds, and three block shots. What is it that really sets her apart um, from many of her, from many from your from yourselves that really pushed really got her to be honored for a first team uh, all defense. Um, she's so active. She's active. Um, before every game, though, I hear D say, you know, be a problem, Breezy, be a problem. It's like mm -hmm. we just put the battery in her bag and just close it and just let her do her thing. Um, but she's so active. Her activity, um, she's athletic. Obviously, she's learned how to play um, off of BG, their chemistry, the way that they move, you know, with each other. Um, and she's just a go-getter. She, she's 
obviously first team all defense. In my mind, she's a defensive player of the year. Mm -hmm. Just her ability to affect the floor, alter shots. People think about her, they scheme. We don't want to go towards her direction. Um, and that's what she brings to the table for us. She's just, she does all the thankless jobs that we need. And um, it's definitely showing her maturation process, getting more involved on the offensive end. Um, she's just getting started. We're gonna go to in-person now. Any questions? Okay, thank you so much. Um, uh, Brittany Griner, I'd like to come to you for this one. I spoke to a Kia nurse before the game and she felt that the difference for Phoenix would be defense because um, she put it something akin to basically y'all could score at any time against any team. Mm -hmm. First, I want your thoughts on offensively, what makes Phoenix special? And then how do you feel you showed up today defensively? Uh, any given night, anybody on this team can put up numbers. And I think that's what makes it hard. You know, you can take away one, two things. You can't take away everything. And uh, we have players that are going to step up and do whatever we need to do, uh, whatever they need to do that night so we can get that win, honestly. And then just defensively, we got we have Breezy. You know, like anything we need her to do, go get 20 boards, lock down this person, don't let them get their, their, their high. And she just does it. No questions asked, she just goes and do it. And I think that's what sets us uh, apart. We got her and then just every night, like I said, every night, any one of us, it just go off. Diana, for you, uh, asked Sue Bird about the uh, jersey swap. She said that was something pre-planned. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? And then also I wanted to know if you had a comment from Chantel's question about if this is her last season uh, and your thoughts on that. Yeah, you know, when we've played so long, you never know if you're ever going to get the opportunity to do that again. So, you know, we just took advantage. We we're going to do it last week, but I didn't travel. So um, today seemed um, fitting and um, on the other question. I think when you hear the word Sue, um, a winner, just a winner in all facets of life. Obviously basketball, we know what she's done, um, but what she's been able to do off the court, um, I think in the last two, three years, pushing certain things that she holds very valuable to herself. Um, those are the things that people are gonna remember about her. We know what, what she did on the court, great point guard, great leader, unselfish. I've learned so much uh, from being around her and um, you know all those things I'll take with me and I'll try to pass them down because um, she's the ultimate winner and the most unselfish person I've ever been around. Diana, this is the sixth uh, playoff series between you and Seattle. Uh, you guys got them in seven, 2017. They obviously got you in 2018. Now you guys win today. Just talk about the rivalry between Seattle and Phoenix. I mean, people keep wanting to make rivalries. They're here. I mean, these teams with a lot of history, a lot of winning history, these rivalries are here. And uh, we know they're here. Uh, we know when we walk in this building, it's a different type of energy. Uh, they want to beat us, and we want to beat them. Um, and, and, and that's healthy, um, I think, for our game, for the WNBA, for these organizations wanting to beat each other every year. I think um, that makes things more interesting. And uh, I'm sure it won't be the last time we see him. Obviously, Stu is going to get better. Um, and, and this team is going to be here for a long time. And hopefully, we are too. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.